Ay, ay, ay. All right, let's get it. We got another one. We got uh, we got your boy Jeezy. We got a brief intro on Jeezy. Um, first, uh, I I think there's a lot of people, or there's a few people that don't know who Jeezy is. Um, Jeezy's not as popular as he used to be. I know a cousin that didn't know who the fuck Jeezy was, so uh, this is what I'm here for, to show you guys who Jeezy is. Now, this is his first album, got 2004 release. Jeezy is known for the Thug Motivation series, TM10, TM101, with 102, 103, and then 104. 104 is supposed to be his last album. Um, he's supposed to be retiring. Of course, nobody wants him to retire. Him and Game are both retiring at the same time. They came out at the same time. And they both have nine albums. Nine studio albums. Uh, so this is TM101. Everybody knows most of the songs on here. Uh, Standing Ovation. Then What. Go Crazy, that's the remix with Jay-Z. Uh, My Hood, see, and I, I want to play these so bad, but I don't want to get copyrighted. Because these songs send me back. When this shit came out, I was, um, I was, uh, I was born in 92, so I was, I was 14. And bottom of the map, Oh, and then Soul Survivor. He got a Bun B feature, Lloyd feature, Akon, T.I., Lil Scrappy, Trick Daddy, uh, Hove. You know, this is a pretty solid album. And then you got the inspiration. TM102. Hypnotize. Uh, one of my top 100 songs. Uh, Jeezy. I love it. I love it. I love it. That song is that song is fucking timeless. I'll never get over that song. Uh, it just it it brings me a lot of good memories. Oh, R. Kelly. And uh, a side note on R. Kelly. I mean, we've all known in the black community how weird R. Kelly was, you know. And um, he was talented, man, but. But, you know, R. Kelly career is done. It's crazy. It's crazy because if, if I would have looked back 10 years and, and thought R. Kelly would have went down like that, I would have never imagined R. Kelly going down like that, you know. Um, does he deserve what he did? If he did those that all that shit that he did to those girls, he deserves what he, what he got. Don't get me wrong. Um, but, man, you know. R. Kelly used to be, R. Kelly was a legend, and now he's going down in infamy. Timbaland, one of the best producers ever. Uh, Keisha Cole, I will be doing one on Keisha Cole. I do not want people to forget about Keisha Cole. Extremely talented, still doing music to this day. His homies, T.I., 3-6 Mafia, which is Juicy J, Project Pat, Gangsta Boo, some other people. Uh, now we got the recession. He took uh, he took a two year break. And uh, here's the thing about this: this is when things started going down. Cause um, let me see. So I I want to put this in context for 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 people that are younger than me. The '90s the '90s was amazing until Pac died. In the black community, the 90s was amazing until Pac died. Then Biggie died. Then everybody was sad, mourning. Uh, Diddy, he was Puff Daddy at the time. Puffy came, Puffy, Puffy was coming out, Mace, all, everybody was looking for that new guy. And DMX became that new guy. Ja Rule was coming up, Jay-Z was still doing his thing, so there was, we was looking for that new person, but they never filled the void of Biggie and Tupac. We just, got used to it. So uh, 
by the time 2000, 2000 came, 2000, 2000 2003, um, it was the fake bling era. That was a fake bling area. Everything was a new. Everything was brand new. Um, everybody was starting to co-mingle and sing Brent, Britney Spears would at least have one hip-hop feature and everybody was starting to co-mingle back in the early 2000s. Um, you know, and there was NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, all these pop acts, Christina Aguilera, you know, and uh, 2003, you know, DMX was the, the like the pop and one, Jay-Z, Nelly, Nelly, Jay-Z, DMX, uh, Ja Rule was on a decline, um, he was up, but he was, he was declining by the end of the 2000 and 2003 era, in 2004, 2006, was an even fresher era. Uh, everybody was still coming outside. Uh, we had internet, but everybody would be outside. Like you were forced to be out. Back in our days, you were forced to be outside. You know, there was a few people on video games. Don't get me wrong, but um, when you go, when you when you used to go outside back in the day, there used to be kids out like all the time. A lot more kids out. So. Um, 2006 ends by 2007 the energy shifted again every three years the energy shifts the energy of the world shifts until um, until 2010 everything went stable in 2010 and 2010 to 2020 um, everything just went stable after that but once Biggie and Pac died everything shifted every three years so by the time 2007 2008 came along it was a shift in the hip hop community, basically because Kanye West beat 50 Cent and album sales just by a little bit, and it was a phase of letting the gangsta out and letting the 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 weirdos, the, the you know the, the the smart people in. And technology was becoming greater, and MySpace was coming in. And it was a new era. So by the time Jeezy came out in 2008. Um, he was slowly declining. Every all the, the the all the dudes that were popular in the early 2000s, 2004, 2005, like the Jeezy's and the games, um, it was it, it it became a shift in hip hop. It was harder for them to keep up because they had to start using more pop sounds. So my whole point for that little rant was to go full circle and explain this album. Um, he basically has no features on here. And um, he had he, he did a song with Kanye West, he did a song with Nas, and he got a song with Trey Songz and Boozy Badass and Anthony Hamilton. And that's it. So the whole theme of this Jeezy album was to talk about the recession or talk about something that may relate to the people, you know, because that street shit it works, but it is a smaller demographic of that. It's a smaller demographic. If you do that type of music nowadays, and that was way back in 2008, that's 10 years ago. So he did the song with Kanye West, "Put On." That's popular. That's the most popular song on the album. Uh, there's a remix with Jay Z. I did the one with Kanye, and then he had a beef with Nas earlier because Nas came out in 2006 with the the album "Hip Hop Was Dead," and basically I think it alludes, but it, it alludes to all of what I explained earlier. Um, Nods could feel the energy. You know, everybody, we, we used to be, especially for the black community, it was strong. Everybody used to be for the people. And by time 2006, 2007 came, that's when a shift started. It was a shift because everybody was really commingling. I mean, back in 2000, 2000, 2003, everybody was commingling. But by but four years later, it was it was a divide. It was it was a real divide. By 2007, everything became about technology. Kids were coming out, coming outside less. Um, everything was shifting. 2007 was a very weird year. 2004 to 2006 was my favorite era. But um, he had a beef with Nas because Nas said hip hop was dead. He felt it. He felt it. He really felt it. And um, Jeezy Jeezy took huge offense to it. So Jeezy was beefing with Nas, claiming that um, he—I guess he thought Nas was coming at him directly. 
like they squashed the beef they squashed the beef behind closed doors. Basically they were saying it wasn't a good idea for GT to beef with Nas. Nas is a fucking stable in hip hop. It's a very, very bad idea. So they came up with the song, My President and um <laughs> there's this run in there's this run in thing saying running theme saying that uh Jeezy predicted that Obama was going to become president because the song was basically saying my president was black and uh, Obama was running and was the first black president and Jeezy made the song before Obama got elected and Obama ended up getting elected in office so you know that's that's a very interesting story on that and now you got TM103 he took a little break again uh Every every album, every one of his TM series, amazing. Every one of them. TM 103 is honestly my favorite. He came in with 2011. He had to mix it in with the pop, the R&B, the jazzy. Because again, by time 2007 hit, he made this album in 2011. Hip-hop has become something more for a wider audience. Everybody's commingling now, so... Boom! You got you got you got more of the champagne life type pop feel, still with a little street appeal, but you have to censor yourself with the street shit to reach the wider audience. And Jeezy's the one of the the staple artists at this point because a lot of the a lot of the legends are falling off. Um, Ludacris by 2010 2011. Ludacris Ludacris waited five years to make an album and then. You know, he said he wasn't going to make us wait, and we're waiting. We're still waiting. To this day, we're still waiting for another Ludacris album. Uh, Twista, Twista isn't as relevant. Common is still okay. Common is still good. Um, who else is who else is hot in the 90s? Busta Rhymes, uh, Method Man, all the 90 cats. Most of them, DMX, completely fell off the map. Uh, so... He got so let me get back into GZ. He got uh, Fabulous, Jadakiss, Future, Two Chains, an early Two Chains, uh, Neo, Jill Scott, Ti, Andre 3000, and Jay Z on the same song. Um, one of my favorite songs on the album, by the way. Snoop Dogg, Devin the Dude, Miss Shelley, Trick Daddy, Freddie Gibbs, Lil Wayne, Drake, Freddie. Oh, Eminem, right? So. I found this song. I found this song discouraging through all my little, all this little shit. I ended up finding this song that Jeezy did with Eminem, only because I wanted to give Eminem more features. So Jeezy and Eminem did do a song together, and I added it on this album. Drake, Lose My Mind, Lose My Mind originally had a uh, plies on. And then again, scourging through the internet, scourging through Wikipedia, I found that there was a Drake, there was a Drake version, so I added the Drake version on there. Cause Drake did do a song with Jeezy as well. So Jeezy took another four year break, dropped an amazing album, another one, seen it all. Um, he got Akon on here, August Alcina, Jay Z, beautiful with Rick Ross in the game. I was just listening to that. Boozy Badass. So Boozy Badass was in jail for four years. Kind of like what Kodak Black is going through right now. And um, we waited for him for four years. He dropped the album called Touchdown that caused hell. And then Boozy just kind of settled on a decline after that. Boozy is always going to be Boozy. And most people aren't going to know who Boozy is again. But I'm going to be here to remind you who Boozy Badass is. So he got another future verse. Kelly Rowland. I wish I always wish Kelly Rowland dropped more music, you know, because um. Nah, I'm not even gonna say it. We got Ti, uh, YG. He signed at this point. At this point, and I almost forgot about this. Jeezy signed YG. So YG is under YG is under Jeezy. And um, they just did a song together, Ti and YG. That's an interesting feature, by the way. It's in the R.I.P. song, which is his most popular song. Added that on there. Uh, 
none of these songs really hit anybody, really. Seen It All has one of the best Jay-Z verses I've ever heard, so. Um, then he went down, he was like, man, you know, because it takes a lot to to make a scene at all and uh, 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 TM-103. Those, those albums are masterpieces. The budget on those albums is probably high as fuck, too. So, he took it down a notch with Church in the Street. <laughs> GZ trying to be a preacher and shit. This isn't that bad of an album. It just practically has no features, no rappers. It's just him. Um, Scared of the Dark is amazing. Gold Bottles is incredible. Uh, he has some girl named Tasha Couture, Janelle Monet, and Monica. Now you got Trapper Die 3. Based off his, fa his famous mixtape. So he put Yo Gotti on here. Bankroll Fresh, rest in peace. French Montana. Wheezy. Lies and brief. This is an okay album. Again, the quality is very low. Um, it's very, very. Compared to TM103 and Seen It All, it's very low. And then Pressure. Personally, I think this is his worst album. Um, high production, but there's very little song. It almost seemed like at this point Jeezy was tired. He dropped an album every year for four consecutive years, I think. Yeah, 2014, 2014, 2015, and then 2016, and then 2017. Got pressure. Um, after this, so he on this one he has T Grizzly verse, Two Chains, Puffy hopped on one, Kodak Black. YG, Tory Lanez, Rick Ross, Wizkid, the kid out of Africa. I'm going to be uh, reminding you guys of him as well. Trigger, Kendrick Lamar, and he had a Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole feature. Now, him putting Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole in one song caught the attention of a lot of people. Uh, people were trying to, people assumed that there was going to be a, a, a um, joint project that Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole was going to do. This was 2017. It's 2019. That shit died down so quick. And it never came into fruition. I personally don't care. Uh, if it does happen, it happens. Cool. But as long as Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole keep dropping albums, 